most often people defy. Oh, you just have to see the commercials. Age defy. Let me tell you, that stuff don't work. <laughs> because my partner uses it. Baby, I love you. I hope you're not seeing this. <laughs> you know, and the reality is, when we allow ourselves to go gracefully in our, in our mind, imagine what the body's going to do, what the spirit is going to do. It's going to allow itself to journey forward in the grace that God has for us. Being an intimate and harmonious relationship with God, with ourselves, and with others. So that the expression of who we are allows us to eliminate the unnecessary clutter. Oh, man, unnecessary clutter. Oh, you know, last week when I consecrated with Reverend Tim, he talked about baggage. You know, he mentioned different, different types of baggage, and he laid it right out. He said, baggage is baggage. Yeah. I don't care how, how you name it, how you label it, baggage is baggage. And God has called us to simply get rid of the baggage and to be free of what was and no longer needs to be and allow ourselves to simply grow gracefully in our bodies, mind, and spirit, and to let the spirit do what it does best, heal us. We know when something is not right. We know when we're not hearing the truth. We know when we're not seeing it. And we definitely know when we're not living it. When we know that we're going against the grain of the spirit, spirit is chill out. You're at the fork of the road. Now, I'm telling you to go this way, but you want to go that way, and that's okay. You'll just have to learn it yourself. And as we do, we then acquire the lessons of life so that we can then instruct someone else about the value of being who we are. This 16-year-old young man, all he wanted to do was learn, not through the eyes and expressions, of his mom, not through her experience, but through his experience, so that he can grow up to be the man that she hopes he can be, and that I know he will be. And it's to that end that we can allow ourselves to truly be all that God has called us to be, to be a reflection of God's diversity in body, mind, and spirit so that we can be an expression of God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And how can we do it if we're not able to physically? We're the only hands Jesus has. We're the only feet that can travel the road. We can, this is the only heart that can truly feel the expression that God has laid out for us. And if we taint it with lies and deceit, with toxins, how can it do what God is asking us to do? Sometimes what we need is a spiritual enema. As pleasant as that might sound, honey, let me tell you, a spiritual enema allows us to truly flush the toxins out and be present. How many times will I say that word? And I, <laughs> Reverend Pat is like, oh, no, he didn't say that. Oh, yes, I did. And I, <laughs> Spirit needs us. Spirit needs this body. And we need spirit. We need to be balanced in emotion. And we all know too well what it's like to be off balance, maybe when our partner doesn't get us, when our coworker doesn't get us, when, you know, when maybe our, our, our pew partner doesn't get us. All we want to do is be heard, be understood, and be accepted. And growing into our skin, growing into our bodies, growing into our spirit and mind allows us to understand and acknowledge that the person sitting to the right of me, to the left of me, the person in front of me and behind me is not that much different than me. Because you pinch them, they bruise. You cut them, they bleed. You say a harsh word, they hurt. But you use loving words and they blossom. And they, like you and me, can truly be an expression of God's handiwork 
today and tomorrow. Honoring our bodies and honoring our spiritual and emotional well-being is allowing shift to happen. Allowing shift to happen. Shift our perspective so that we can see what works and what doesn't work. Shift our point of view so we can see things differently. Wow, it's beautiful out there. Shift our understanding to let go and let go and let God. So we can model God's love in this world today. A lot of people don't know how to do that. I was at the doctor's office the other day, and the young lady asked me, so, do you work? And I said, yeah, I'm a pastor. Really? I must not look like a pastor. I'm afraid to see what her pastors look like. <laughs> you know, so we started talking, and, uh, and then she started to, to, you know, to share her experience about church, and, and you know, she's busy, so she doesn't go to church. And I said, you know, that's... That's the human story. That's the human dynamic. You know, life is good. Church is eliminated. Life is bad. Welcome, church. Life is good. Church is eliminated. Life is bad. Welcome, church. And she looked at me, and she's like, I'm going to start going back to church again. I was like, you do that. My family and friends, my sisters and brothers, let the people see God in, in, in and through your body. Let your body speak in loving and wholesome ways. Be open. Let your mind think of creating an expression of an expressive ways of truly being creative. Allow your mind to paint the picture that God has in store for you. And let your spirit honor the mystery and mercy of God as the Spirit of God continues to lift you up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. <laughs> oh, loving God, we honor you when we honor ourselves. And I thank you because when one member of the body is afflicted, all members are afflicted. When one member is honored, all are honored. So we thank you for this time and for this moment. May, may all this be done for your glory so we can truly let our bodies speak so that we can be in unison with your spirit and your mind. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen.